All right, we're going to look at our next homework, which is on geometric sequences and series, which I got a little typo going on here. All of the sequences and series on this page are geometric. Okay, so first one, we're given that geometric sequence has a first term of five and a common ratio of two. So when we're thinking about this guy, we know that geometric sequences are where you multiply every term by the same number. So if we know the first term is five, and with that common ratio of two, we know that to get the second term, we multiply five times two, which makes 10. And then to get the next term, we're gonna take that same, t uh, that 10 times that same number, a two, gets us 20. Then the fourth term, we'll take the 20 times again, and two, and that gets us 40. And for our fifth term, we'll take the 40 times two, which makes 80. And so those are the first five terms of this sequence. Now to write an expression for the nth term. So a sub n, we don't know which number term it is, but if you notice the pattern, we always start with this same number five, and then we're gonna multiply by a whole bunch of twos. So if you look at this for the fifth um, two, I mean the fifth term, we multiplied by one, two, three, four twos really to that original number. So it's like two to the one less than where you're at. So let's see that again. Take away those two. So if you look at like the fourth term, it's multiplying by a two, but it already had two other twos in it. So there's a total of three twos for the fourth term. So if we're looking at the nth term, we're gonna multiply by this two, we're gonna do it one less than wherever we're at. So if we were at the number five, then this would be five minus one, which would mean four twos would be multiplied. So this is our expression for our nth term. So to find the 12th term of the sequence, we would know we would start with the number five, because that's our starter guy, and then we're gonna multiply by a whole bunch of twos. For on the 12th term, that would mean 11 twos. And so if we work that out, two to the 11th power times five, I'm thinking about those exponents first. So let's see here, we have two to the power 11 is gonna be 2048. So five times 2048 will get us, oops, I messed up on my calculator. <laughs> It'll be 10,240 for that 12th term. Now using summation notation, if we wanna find the sum of those first 12 terms, our summation will be from one, and I like to use i, you can use n if you want to, but i equals one up to the 12th, and we're gonna stick that expression in here, but whatever variable you use, that's the variable that you need for your expression. So again, you could use n, I just like i, that's what I'm used to. So you could have n minus one here, but you need to make sure that you put an n here. <coughs> Okay, so now we want to find the sum of the first 12 terms. So for a geometric series, remember that the sum is gonna be, let's see, I'll write the general one first, s sub n is equal to a sub one times one minus r to the n all over one minus r. So s12 here is gonna be um, the first term that we had is five times one minus two to the 12th power. And this will be all over one minus our r, which is two. So just subbed in all those values, which um, this is gonna be five times one minus two to the 12th is 4,096 if you punch that in. And then one minus two is gonna be negative one. So we're gonna take five times um, one minus 4,096 is negative 4,095, and this is over negative one. So when you multiply that, really, um, we're gonna get a negative over negative, so we have a positive result, and it's gonna come out to be 20,475. So that's the sum of the first 12 terms. All right, for part two, we wanna find the first term of the geometric sequence. So this time we know the fifth term, and we know the common ratio. 
So if we want to find the first term, well, let's think about this. The fifth term is found by taking the first term times our radius, or not radius, <laughs> our common ratio. Um, it would be four of them if we're talking about the fifth term. So we know that negative 16 ninths is equal to our first term times our r here is negative 2 to the 2 thirds to the fourth power. So it's going to be negative 16 over 9 equal to a, a little 1 on there, uh, negative 2 thirds times negative 2 thirds and negative 2 thirds and negative 2 thirds, 4 of them is going to be 16 over 81. And so if we multiply both sides here by that um, 81 over 16 or divide by 1681, same thing, that's going to make a sub 1 will be equal to we could reduce this a little, the 16 and 16, it'll be negative 81 over 9, but really that's just negative 9. So we get negative 9 is equal to a1, that is the first term. For number 3, it wants us to find the ninth term of our geometric sequence. Um, so this one might be easier if you think about, because um, smaller numbers here. If we have our second term, we don't know our third term, fourth term, fifth term, but we know that um, our first term here is 6, and we're going to get all the way up to 162. And since it's geometric, they're multiplying by some r to make this number, then multiply by another r to make this number, then multiply by another r to finally get to 162. So really, 6 times r to the third power is going to be equal to that 162. So if I divide both sides by 6, I just realized I didn't write 162. I don't know where that come, came from. There we go. So then r cubed will be equal to 162 divided by 6 is 27. So if we cube root both sides here, we're going to end up that r will equal 3. So that's going to be our common ratio. So if we want to find the ninth term, we're going to take our... Um, <coughs> we need to figure out... Um, where we're headed next, let's see, we're going to take, well, we don't know our first term, so let's kind of continue this, a6, a7, a8, a9, and I know that this is my goal here, I'm going to multiply by that r, times r, times r, times r, times r, four of them, so um, we're going to take that starting number, which is 162, and multiply by four r's, well, we know that r, is 3, so that's 3 to the 4th. So we get 162 times 81, which will be 13,122. So there are like formulas that you can use, but also if you think about um, what's going on here with these geometric and arithmetic sequences, there's so many patterns that you can kind of draw out and imagine what's really going on there as opposed to just writing it down into an equation. All right, for number four here, we're trying to evaluate this sum. So remember that this notation here means that we're going to be adding a bunch of things, and the things we're adding, when we start by plugging a one in, and then it goes to infinity. So we know that this is infinite. And so if we look at what our first one will be, like if I plug in i equals one, that's going to be three-fourths to the one minus one, which is three-fourths to the zero, which is one. When i is equal to 2, that's 3 fourths to the 2 minus 1, which is 3 fourths to the 1, so we get 3 fourths. And i equals 3, it's 3 fourths to the 3 minus 1, which is 3 fourths squared, which is 9 sixteenths. So just kind of noticing what's going on. Uh, and some of you guys can see it just from looking at this um, expression here, but we're really multiplying by three-fourths every time. And so we know that um, the one, the, that's our first term, and if we're going to multiply by three-fourths every time, this is an um, infinite geometric sequence. Now because three-fourths is less than one, we can actually find a sum. The sum is going to be equal to the first term over 1 minus that common ratio. So we're going to have 1 over 1 minus 3 fourths. Well, 1 take away 3 fourths is really just 1 fourth 
multiplying by the reciprocal, 1 times 4 over 1 gets us 4. So the total sum here is going to be equal to 4. <clears throat> For number 5, suppose that a person is paid 1 cent and on day one, on day 1, and every day thereafter that payment is doubled. We want to write a formula for the nth term of that sequence and that gives the payment on day n. So let's think about this for a second here. I kind of like doing it with real numbers so we can like, imagine what's happening. So if on day one they have a penny, then on day two that doubles. That means to times by two, so we'll have two cents. On day three, we'll double that, so we'll have four cents. So we notice every time it's going to multiply by two. So that helps us out a little bit. We know it's a geometric sequence. So if we think about day 30, we want to find what's going on on day 30, the 30th term. So we know that on that 30th day, well, they started with that penny, and every day it multiplied by 2. Well, how many 2s by the time I got to the 30th day? Well, that would be 29. So um, if we punch this into our calculator, we could say, 2 to the 29th power, I like to do that exponent first, that's our order of operations. So 2 to the 29th power, um, and then multiply that by 0 0.01. Looks like it's going to be 5368709.12. Wow, that's a lot of money, right? We started with one penny, that's one cent, and we ended up with five, I mean, over $5 million dollars. So in general, if we think about what's happening, it's saying that to find the nth term for the nth day, you know, you started with that penny and you multiplied by two, one less than wherever you're at, because every day after the first day it doubled. So what's the total amount that's earned over the course of 30 days? So now it's really wanting us to find the sum of those first 30 days. So remember that the sum for a geometric uh, sequence is found by taking the first term, so we know that's going to be our penny, times 1 minus 2 to the 30, all over 1 minus r, which is 2. So again, that's our r, so I just sub that in, and then this was our a sub 1. So we're going to get 0 0.01 times, if we're going to take 1 minus 2 to the 30th power, that's going to be equal to negative 1073741823. Need a calculator for that. <laughs> Over negative 1. So the dividing by that negative 1 just makes the negatives cancel. So really all we're concerned with is taking this big number um, and turning it into pennies, really. If we multiply it by point. Multiply that by 0 0.01. Let me see. Try and figure out where my decimals are here. It would be 10, 7, 3, 7, 4. Oops. Let's see. 4, 1. Kind of changed things a little bit. Hold on one second. So I'm saying this big number 1073, 1073, 741. 8, 2, 3, multiplying it by 0 0.01, just moves our decimal place. So we're at 10, 7, 3, 7, 4, 1, 8, 0 0.23. And that's the total, right? $10 million by the end of 30 days. That'd be cool. All right. So one, next I want us to find the sum of these following geometric series. So um, we just saw finding that sum. So remember that we want to know how many terms there are. We need to know our first term. We also need to know what our common ratio is. And so if you look at what we have right now, we don't know what our, um, let's see, we actually know a lot. We know our common ratio. Let's see, we're multiplying by three, looks like, each time. We know our first term, so if we punch that stuff in, it's going to be 4 times 1 minus 3 to the, now we don't know what power we're talking about, and by power, the n is how many terms we're adding, the number of terms. So really we want to figure out, well, what term number is this guy right here, this 78732? So I don't know that, 
I'm going to say it's the nth term. Um, that we want to find out what that n is. Well, it's a 4, that's our beginning term, times that common ratio 3 to the n minus 1, and we know that that would equal 78,732. So if I want to solve this, this is really like an ex exponential equation. I'm going to divide both sides by 4, so 3 to the n minus 1. will equal, if we divide that number by 4, we'll get 19,683. Well, 19,683, if you break that apart, um, it's actually going to become 3 to the ninth power. You can play with that on your calculator. And the reason why we want to think about that is because remember, if we can make our bases match each other, then we know that our exponents have to be equal. So then that tells us that n minus 1 will be 9, and so we end up that n is equal to 10. So for our sum here, we're going to stick that in here and have 1 minus 3 to the 10th. So this is equal to 4 times 1 minus 3 to the 10th is 59,049. This is all over 1 minus 3, which will be negative 2. Um, and so if we simplify this and multiply, um, I'm going to end up with 118,096. So double check that, make sure you find out the value of, again, that was S10, because that was the 10th term of our sequence. All right, for this last one here, it's an infinite geometric series. Each time you can see that the common ratio is going to be 1 6. It's multiplying by 1 6. And so we know that if we want to find a sum of an infinite series, it has to have that common ratio being less than 1. And then we just take 1 over, sorry, a sub 1 over 1 minus r. a sub 1 is our first term, and then 1 minus that 1 6. So this is 1 over 5 over 6, which 1 over that would become 6 fifths. So that's going to be the sum of those terms. So I hope that helps.